Today we celebrate the seven holy founders of the Servite Order, also known as the Servants of America. Uh, these, this group began in the 13th century. And you have to understand there was a lot of things happening in the 13th century in Italy. There was a uh, grave immorality going on, that goes on, but there was also a lot of blood feuds between different factions. And it led to a lot of chaos. Uh, you know, people banded together for lousy things and bad and evil things. <clears throat> but just as true, you know, the scripture tells us grace, I mean, sin abounds, grace more abounds. Well, in that context, in that milieu of evil and corruption and in-house fighting and bloodshed, immorality, seven uh, merchants, pretty well off, banded together to form a religious group. So that's really kind of gives us a lot of hope, you know, when we look at tough times, sometimes I, I see people so discouraged in these tough times. I say, remember, we're great, I'm sin abounds, grace is more abound. Don't lose your heart. Go deep. Let the Lord lead us in this time. Certainly these uh, people did let the Lord lead them. Their names were Bonophilius, John, Nona, Junta, Gerard, Sestegni, Bartholomew, Amede, Benedict, Nellantella, Ricoveris, Ubliusione, uh, and Alexei Falconeri. Uh, later, uh, James Pogobus, the Pogobonzi, who was their chaplain of a group. These guys used to meet kind of in prayer in a group called the Laudesi, and their chaplain was Father James Pogibonzi, and he uh, later on joined them. So that made up seven. Two of them were widows, two were married, and the other were single. They were merchants, well to do. But they felt uh, this call of God to prayer and penance. And so they uh, married once, settled all their arrangements, they gave, set them up financially, and then they went off, and part of them went to a place called uh, Cafagio, and the other group went to Mount Sereno, and they began just a life of prayer and fasting. Eventually, through the advice of their, another spiritual, Father Peter Martyr, they wrote a rule based on St. Augustine's rule, took in a modified habit of uh, the Augustinians, and they called themselves the, uh, the Servants of Mary. And they began just to live kind of almost like a monastic life, doing prayer and uh, penance in behalf of the people of God. Again, brothers and sisters, what's the best response to things that disturb us? Prayer and penance and fasting. They just go right in hand. We're going to hear that in just about another week from the great beginning of Lent to Ash Wednesday, when Jesus tells us, when you pray, when you fast, when you give alms, you throw in there when you do penance. He doesn't say if, it's when. It's part and parcel of our life, especially in times of tough. We need to pray. That's what these men did. And eventually they got uh, recognized as a religious order. And then a little bit later, uh, later on through the leadership of St. Philip the Nisi, uh, they uh, moved from monastic to kind of a mendicant order style of religious order. Uh, they spread it all over to the New World. That's probably where they did the greatest work was here in the United States, where they were had a charge of a great basilica, Our Lady of Sorrows in Chicago, where they held our, the novena of Our Lady of Sorrows. And crowd to crowd came. Uh, I know one of my dearest friends in my life is a priest. He was part of the religious order. Later he moved into the Diocese of Priesthood, but he was part of it. The, they've done great work. A lot of them in education now, for example, Survive High School in Orange County. But they do point to something really critical. That is, in tough times, evil bands together. Where sin abounds, in tough times, good ought to band together. That's why it's important for us to worship together every day. What you folks do every day here is the most important work in the whole world. I don't even know, I don't even know how powerful the Mass is. I have a vision that God kind of stays His hand all because of faithful people like you who band together every day to pray, not just for your needs, to pray for the church. This sacrament is that powerful to hold at bay the, uh, the fires of hell and all the, uh, all the chastisement perhaps we do deserve because of our sinfulness. God holds it at the mercy of the Son. 
and that we continue to pray and fast, do penance for our sins and the sins of the world around us, praying that now the Lord will bring alive new bands, new religious orders for this time, this place. You know, religious orders exist for some time, just a period of time, and then they disappear. Not everyone, but a lot have come and gone, but they serve their purpose in, the, in a very critical time. And at this time, we pray now for young people to come aboard, to come and hear the gospel message that we heard today. What is it to gain the whole world, which is so passing and so, it's so ephemeral. It's so transitory. I mean, how can we not be affected by the tragic death of Whitney Houston? One who was blessed with a heavenly voice and did so well and then, uh, and unless it's sustained by a deep spiritual life, it just crushes him and crushes you. And we lose this beautiful person. Had the whole world in nothing. We want to invest all our energy and time in storing the treasure of the heaven that never can be taken from us. So this day, we pray. We pray in this universe. And we get ready to pray very sincerely for the next six weeks in Lent so that where sin is abounding, we're banding together so that grace more abounds. And out of that, out of that uh, synergism of grace and the work of the Holy Spirit, God will work great, great miracles for our modern world. Amen. Amen. Amen.